Hello, and welcome to today's lesson, one of our final lessons uh, for Algebra 1, Lesson 5.5, .5, Solving a System of Linear Inequalities by Graphing. Uh, this is one of my favorite lessons, uh, just because graphing inequalities is, is something interesting and, and new and, and kind of fun. So we're going to look at these, and uh, we're going to graph them very similar to the way that we graph uh, a system of you know, equations, except that we're not looking for the point of intersection, but we're going to be looking for where the shading overlaps. So when we're looking at our system of, of inequality. So today we're just going to kind of focus on graphing uh, inequalities. Um, just one inequality and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let's take a look here at our, our first one and we'll get started. So let's write down some, some rules uh, for us to follow and, and, and guidelines for us to have as we're going through this. So the first one is that we're going to rewrite an inequality in slope-intercept form. So we always just want to be able to graph them in slope-intercept form. So we don't want, don't forget to reverse the inequality symbol if you divide or multiply by negative. So that's a review from uh, previous lessons on you know rewriting uh, inequalities. Always want to make sure we flip that sign if necessary. Uh, we want to determine whether to use a solid or a dashing line, and then and graph it. So we use a solid line when we have the or equal to symbol we use a dash line when it's just less than or greater than so a solid line just like an equation when it's equal to we have a solid line we're using a dash line when it's not equal to and we always want to determine whether to shade above or below the line and we're going to use a test point typically that test point a good point is zero zero uh, that point will either be above or below our line and we can use that and use that kind of just like we did with the graphing of the system of equations as kind of that test point to see, hey, did, did our point work or not work? Uh, we're going to use that test point to determine whether we shade above or below our lines. All right, so let's take a look here at an example. So <clears throat> our first example is that we're going to rewrite the inequality in slope-intercept form. So we're looking at 2x plus 4y is greater than 16. And we need to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. So uh, remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So I need to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. So I'm left with 4y greater than or equal to uh, negative 2x plus 16. So I just slide that negative 2x in there uh, in the front. I'm going to divide by 4 divide everything by 4. Now I'm dividing by a positive 4 so I don't need to flip my sign. So I'm just left with y is greater than or equal to uh, negative 2 over 4 simplifies to negative 1 half x and 16 over 4 is 4. So negative 1 half x plus 4. So I've rewritten my uh, equation, my inequality into slope intercept form. So I would be ready to graph it at this time. But that's all we're going to look at for this one, is just make sure that we know how to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. Step number two is determine whether to use a solid or dashing line and then graph it. So uh, we use a solid line once again when we have the or equal to symbols, less greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And we use a dashed line when it's just less than or just greater than. So in our problem, we had negative one-half x plus four uh, y is greater than or equal to. So I see this symbol, so that means I'm going to use a solid line. So let's graph this. So plus 4 is where I start. So 1, 2, 3, 4. My slope is negative 1 over 2, negative 1, 2. So I get a few points going. And I need to graph it, and I'm using a solid line. So I get my ruler out, and I make sure I get my solid line going here. Oops, and I lose my blue pen. Sorry about that. So I'm just, so this is a sketch. So there's my, my line of my graph. <coughs> so I'm done at this point with step number two. But remember, step number three is to determine, determine whether to shade above or below the line. And I'm going to use that test point, zero, zero. So because I'm going to be shading, I'm going to want to get my highlighter out. So I'm just going to kind of go like this for just a second here. And remember, this is an x value, and that's a y value. So I'm going to just plug those in, and I'm going to see, do, does 0, 0, this point, is that included in my answer or not included in my answer? So 0 
greater than or equal to negative one half times zero, and you're gonna see why I picked zero zero. I could have picked any point on this graph. Ten ten, negative ten ten. I could have picked anything I wanted to, but zero zero really comes out nicely and it works for us well here. So let's just see. So I want to know is this true or not true? So is zero greater than or equal? Well, negative one half times zero is just zero. Plus four. So is zero greater than or equal to four? That's our question. Is zero greater than or equal to four? No. So is zero zero in our solution? No, it's not. So I do not want to graph zero zero in my solution. So my solution is all these points that are above the line, including the line itself. So when I shade, I just shade in all this above it. So you might want to get a marker or a highlighter or, or something like that for yourself. So as you're coloring your graph uh, or shading, you can do that as well. Uh, if zero, zero was in my solution, then I would include it and I would have shaded below the line. But because it's not, I shade above the line. Uh, let's just check a point here above it. So let's pick 10 comma 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that should have been this point right here. So when I plug that in, I should get a yes. So is 10 greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 10 plus 4? Well, 10 greater than or equal to negative 1 half of 10 is negative 5 plus 4. And that is a negative 1. Is 10 greater than or equal to negative 1? Yes. So I did shade the correct side of this graph. Let's take a look at another example. So example two. And we want to graph this inequality and shade our graph accordingly. So the first thing I need to do is write it in slope intercept form. So I have y plus one is less than two x. I need to subtract the one from both sides. So I have y is less than 2x minus 1. I'm in slope intercept form. So I'm ready to graph, but is it going to be solid or dashed? Well, this symbol tells me that it is dashed. So I want to make sure I include that as I'm graphing. So I go to negative 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So as I'm graphing my line here, I want to make sure I'm doing a dashed line. You can already see I'm kind of, I started off with a solid line, but I have my dashed. And I might go back and just kind of dash this up a little bit here if I can. And make sure I get my dashed line. And now I need to shade with my test point. So I see 0, 0 is above, so my test point can be 0, 0. It's not on my line. I don't want to pick a point that's on it. And I could go back to this rewritten equation, but I always like to go back to the original because what if I messed up and forgot to flip my sign or I did something else that I just rewrote it and I did it, made a silly mistake. So I always go back to my original and ask myself there because it should check in there. So 0 plus 1 is 1 and 2 times 0 is 0. Is 1 less than 0? No. So do I shade on that side? Do I shade 0, 0? No. So I just shade on this side of my equation instead. And I've graphed y plus 1 is less than 2x, or y is less than 2x minus 1. Okay. Uh, now I have three problems for you to graph these on your own. So if you could please pause this at this time and graph these equations or inequalities, and we'll come back and check them momentarily. Okay, hopefully you've had enough time to graph our inequality. So we have to remember our three steps. So we want slope intercept form. We need to remember is it dashed or solid? And the shading. And we usually use the test point zero zero to determine what shading. So let's take a look. This is already written in slope intercept form. So I can just get right to graphing it. So I go up 3. And I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. 
And is this going to be solid or dashed? It's going to be a solid line, very nice. So I kind of make my sketch here. And 0, 0 will make a good test point. So I plug that in. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 0 plus 3? I want to know. Is 0 greater than or equal to? Well, that's 0 plus 3. So is 0 greater than or equal to 3? And the answer is no. So do I shade the 0, 0? Nope. So there is my graph for that one. In number two, I've got a little bit of work to do. I need to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So I have 3x greater than, I'm going to subtract that 5x, so minus 5x plus 9, divide everything by 3. So x is greater than negative 5 over 3, x plus 3. Now that's an equation I can graph, so I go up 3. I'm going to go down 5 over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. We're going to always go in the opposite direction as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. There are my points. Solid or dashed should be a dash so there's my graph zero zero will make a good test point so when I come over here and I plug in zero right there and I plug in a zero five times zero is zero three times zero is zero so is zero greater than nine the answer is no so I do not shade zero zero And let's take a look at our last one. Uh, y equals, so if I was going to write this in slope-intercept form, I would say y is less than 0x minus 4. So I have negative 4. And I just have a slope of 0. Pa, is it going to be shaded or dashed or solid? It'll be a dashed line. And I plug in 0, 0. So is 0 less than negative 4? The answer is no. So I shade everything below it. Hopefully you did well on that. And that is the end of today's lesson on graphing inequalities. If you have any questions regarding today's lesson, uh, please consult with your teacher directly and make sure you complete your assignment and homework assignment before doing the homework quiz for this lesson and i thank you for your time today